Hello. And welcome to the Knitting Traditions Podcast. My name is Inga and this is my little corner on the internet where I talk about my knitting. It's December, time is moving very fast. If you're a returning viewer, you know it's been a few weeks since last episode. Life just got in the way, but welcome back. And if you're new here, hello. I hope you enjoy this content. It's uh, very knit focused and um, I'm coming to you from the west coast of Norway where it's currently snow outside and it's giving a little bit of light reflection which is allowing me to record today because it's hard it's hard to find daylight these days and I also have like a ring light to hopefully give the quality of the video some quality <laughs> um it's a bit of a mess around me I have been knitting on a lot of things but it's all mixed so um for me it's a little bit uh tiresome to bend down in my third trimester so i think we're just gonna start with what's on top and then work our way through and um, that'll work i have some acquisitions to show you at the end and uh yeah hopefully i brought everything with me so let's just get started I went to Bergen for um, a course in gynecology and while I was there I worked on some little projects and I am looking at half of a finished object here wondering where the other half went. Let's see, sorry about the crinkles. So, um, while listening to the lecturers, it was a good opportunity to knit on something small. So that's what I did. I finished two pairs of socks, which are gifts for family members. So the first one I finished is this pair. This is um, just a sock tube where I then cut in the heel afterwards. For this pair, I started with the cuff in a contrast color. I used the um, Hillesvog sock yarn, which is a DK weight sock yarn. It has a little bit of nylon in it. And I paired it with just scrappy silk mohair that I have. I have like a little basket of silk mohair scraps, which are more than half a ball of silk mohair but not a full ball so somewhere in between half and a full and i held a dark one with the brown and a light one with the light color the dark was um left over from the amy slipover which i'm wearing sorry i forgot to say this is probably my worst most worn um item it's a slipover from Sunnyskarn with ties on the side and like a big neck, which is quite floopy in this yarn because I used um, one strand of Hillesvog unspun together with one strand of silk mohair. Um, and it's just so soft and warm, so lightweight, and it has not pilled at all, which is saying something because unspun has a tendency to pill. But the combination of one strand of the unspun Hillesvog and the silk mohair has just been a perfect match and I had a little bit left over of that silk mohair which was I bought it at a store called Sparship in Norway I don't don't know the name and the scrap didn't have a tag um, but yes I did these and uh I had my dad try them on and they could fit him. He's like one or two sizes bigger feet than my brother. Um, so, and also Matthias tried these on and they fit him. So I think this size is a size that could be squeezed onto all the men size feet in my family. I have 44 stitches on this and I think I used a 
three and a half or four millimeter needle to knit these socks. They became quite chunky with the DK plus silk mohair and um, I find I don't need like a super tight gauge because with the thick DK with the nylon and adding the silk and mohair component, it becomes quite durable. So one pair of socks finished and uh, the blockers on these are size 43 or 42, I think. And then I did a second pair with whatever I had left of the fueled sokegon from Hillesvog in the brown and the corresponding silk mohair that I had at Scrap Up. And for this one, since I had already used up, because I used all of this up, since I had already used some of this contrast in heel cuff and toes, I didn't have that much left. So instead of doing two tubes from cuff down to a toe, I did the cuff and then I knit until I was almost out of yarn. And then I did the other cuff and then I cut them at the halfway point and did heels. There are lots of YouTube tutorials out there if you don't know how to do this, but essentially you pick up the needles around with a needle, skip a row, and then pick up um, the stitches with a needle, and then you cut one stitch in between those two needles, and you unravel in each direction until you have two separate tubes. So I did the socks. I did um, a few extra rounds with a contrasting gray... Um, and white. This is the Vilsel sock yarn from Hillesvog. Uh, and yeah, so all of the sock yarns in these were full skeins. It's the scraps were the silk mohairs for these, but I do also do socks with other sock yarn scraps. Um, but since this is um, thicker weight yarn, it's not that much midrange, so I would say I do need the whole ball of yarn to make a pair of men's socks and yes so the Vilsa with silk mohair I did I think six rows or ten rows before I started the decreases just because it was looking a bit short and I didn't want the the legs to be super short um if it's for my father because I think they would just slide off his feet then especially since I did the cuffs first they are not that cinched in and long um, so yeah, I, I did that to get a little bit longer foot so I could place the heel lower down and for cutting in the heel, it's essentially the same. It's just that I don't pick up all the stitches. I pick up half the stitches plus maybe one stitch extra or two to make the instep a little bit longer. And then I skip a row and I pick up the same stitches and cut this stitch sort of like that would have been here in the middle point and then unravel until I leave I don't know unravel it all the way I like to leave like one or two stitches on each side still kind of connected with that um brown yarn that I've been unraveling and that prevents it from getting holes um once you knit around so that is a neat little trick to avoid holes if you do the cut in method I'm a big fan. For the heel, I didn't do like 10 extra rounds. I usually do three rounds of knitting and then I start doing the decreases, which is just a classic like wedge toe decrease method. And then you do a Kitchener stitch in the front and on the back. So that's how I make my gift knits socks. I do have my own sock patterns, which I prefer for myself. They fit a lot nicer, but it's just this way of knitting is more mindless you know you can just knit a tube and figure out afterwards who's getting it and it still fits fine um so I finished those and I did have lots of other things that I could have been knitting on but I just wanted something mindless because I wanted to make sure that I got everything I could out of the class um knitting does help me focus and retain information but I wouldn't want something where I would need to count or look at my knitting too much. So I went to a yarn store in Bergen and I got some yarn. And I think, 
I think the yarn I got was, because I've, I've used it up, I think I got, I think, I got two balls of Viva, the new Rauma base. It doesn't look thick enough to be their Vams, and it's not thin enough to be their Fienel, so I think I got two balls of their Fievel. And I made a cowl. Um, I cast on 80 stitches, did a 2x2 two two rib, and then I knit until I thought I had almost no yarn left, so just enough to do the um, ribbing on the top. But as I was binding off, I ran out, so I did have to break into the second ball. And the thought was that I would gift this for my brother for Christmas, but I think it might be a little bit too snug for him. I can get it over my head, but um, like it's not a problem for me. But Matthias tried to get it on and it was a lot tighter for him, so... I don't know how big of a head my brother has. It's going to be great once you have it on though, because it really keeps you nice and warm, um, especially when skiing. And he's very knit worthy. Um, so I don't know, maybe I'll gift it to him. And if it doesn't fit, I'll keep it and then I'll make him another one. They are very quick knits. It's knit in a day. Then uh, keeping on trend with knitting things too small for gifts, I used the second ball that I had just barely broken into to make a pair of fingerless mittens. And um, I just freestyled this, did a one by one rib, and then for the thumb, I knit the thumb after doing the increases, like make one right and make one left. In stockinette, just a ribbing at the top, and I have my own fingerless mitten patterns, which are the Huldra mittens, but that is on thinner, uh, like a smaller gauge needle, thinner yarn, like a Ramofino you could use, uh, so this is a lot thicker yarn, and it's also color work, and I just had one color, so I decided to just freestyle some simple mittens, and I have very small hands. <laughs> uh, the idea was that this was going to be for him, like give him a set. But it's looking like a perfect set for me <laughs> and my size. And honestly, these would be really nice to have when, um, when the baby arrives and I take her out for like strolly rides and stuff or in and out of the car seat where you want the dexterity of your fingers. But it's really cold in Norway. It was minus 30 Celsius at the cabin last weekend. <laughs> um, so yeah, I might just keep these myself and give this to him. See if it fits. If it doesn't fit, I'll make another one and then maybe I can make a pair of a fingerless mitts as well if he, he would like them. But I have made him fingerless mitts before. I made the Hildra mittens for the whole family. So they all have fingerless mittens. Um, yeah see we'll see we'll see i do have a plan to make another pair of fingerless mittens in a yarn that i bought in bergen which i will show you in um, the acquisitions part so that was the finished whips um i think yeah i'll just keep going i don't think i don't think i have more finished whips i think finished objects. I think I have a lot of whips. I know I have a lot of whips and I've made progress on a lot of them, but I don't think I finished anything major since last time. I've tried to be good and get those last little Christmas things that I want to gift people done. And I'm very close. I have one brother socks left. I have a scarf for Matthias, who is sitting out there, so. and I spontaneously cast on another gift knit, which doesn't have to be a gift knit, but it would be fun. 
And that one is in this beautiful bag that I was gifted from the Knitting Swan. And if you use the code Inga on her website, you get 10% off her lovely bags. She makes the prints herself and sews everything up. So she's a one woman business from the UK and she makes really high quality stuff. So in here, I've been keeping my new whip, which is almost finished. Uh, I just need to use a little bit more yarn on the cuff and then I need to crochet on some, some red stripes. So these are the Pembroke stockings. And let's see. This whip, I completely, completely blame Anna from Brook Willow Knits. I also blame her for some acquisition that is on the way because she did a Christmas pattern inspiration video. Uh, and she had a lot of beautiful designs on there. Uh, she had categorized them into different categories. I am definitely... My kind of Christmas is the traditional red, green and gold kind of things. I like old decorations. I like wooden carved things, um, wool. I should show you. I don't have a lot of ornaments, um, but hopefully during the next years, we'll start to get like a little bit more and more with Nelly here. Um, but I do like to get my ornaments from secondhand stores. So like the really old um, handmade Christmas ornaments. I like those. And in one of her categories, she had this stocking, which is the Pembroke stocking. So it's supposed to like hang on the fireplace. Um, very mm, not Norwegian. That is not a Norwegian tradition. Uh, it's very common in the US, I know. But it's coming more and more here and I see the stores are selling stockings that you can buy. Usually we've just had like a stocking with candy um, on the 25th in the morning because we celebrate Christmas on Christmas Eve on the 24th. But I have previously made um, the Lumi socks by Fiber Tales for the whole family, where which I embroidered on our letters. Um, but I made pairs of socks, so my family members has actually worn them as socks. Uh, so I was thinking, since Matthias is celebrating Christmas with us, we've been together for oh, more than eight years, but um, we've always se celebrated with our families separate because we're very family dear, both of us. But now that we are starting our own family, he's spending Christmas with us this Christmas and then next year I'll be spending with his side of the family and I figured he needed a stocking as well so what better than to make some very Christmassy stockings so this is not going to be a pair of socks it's going to be a single stocking because I didn't enjoy knitting on it too much I don't mind knitting color work um, but color work on a small circumference is more fiddly I prefer sweater color work and the fact that this pattern has purl stitches um, to allow you to do the vertical stripes of red afterwards made carrying the um, carrying the yarn, catching floats, and trying to do the weave in Steven method to not have so many ends to weave in a hassle. So I kind of just didn't weave in the ends and I had like a million ends to weave in at the end, but I have done it. So now I just need to do the top part of the stocking here and it's going to have like an edging and then it needs to be like a little loop and then the red needs to be crocheted up. The yarn in the pattern, I think, is like worsted weight is is it it's um i think it was like around 200 meters or maybe it was 220 meters per 100 grams something in those lines but you can check it on on ravelry if if you want to the pattern is the pembroke stockings by 
I wrote it down. Pembroke Stockings by Laura Tabbitt. And uh, the yarn that I got for these and the reason that I spontaneously made these at the cabin is because the local yarn store up there, they had sale on the Perfect yarn from Sunnisgar. And the, the Perfect is a sock yarn, which has um, 200 meters to 100 grams, but these come in 50 gram balls, so 100 meters to 50 grams. And they had almost all of the colors that um, was recommended for the pattern. Now, this isn't the original yarn, so I kind of just looked at the chart to see if I could find something similar. Now, probably my beige isn't dark enough and my greens are not contrasting enough and whatever. It's still looking Christmassy to me and the lighter red is the one that's going to be used for the stripes this way. I was contemplating using the darker one, but I do think I'll stick to what the pattern did. Uh, one of the greens, I believe the lighter green, is Per Gunt by Sanaskar. And I do think that the dark maroony red is the um, smart yarn. So they're not all the same base, but they have pretty much the same uh, meterage and gauge specifications. So uh, not my neatest color work, but I think it will brought the block out nicely. And this isn't going to be put on a foot, so it doesn't matter if it's a little bit tight. It's going to be a Christmas stocking. So yes, I also bought, I think, Laura Tabot. Um, this came in like a pattern kit with two socks and then she had a different one with another two socks all like in the same festive like family but different color work and I really wanted this one and then I really wanted um, the more lighter color one in the other set so <laughs> I ended up getting both of the sets of patterns so that means I have four different stocking motifs and then I was looking on Sunnisgarn and they had um, a similar like uh, style Christmas stocking with all of her color work, more Norwegian looking. There's a lot more going on. Uh, there's little like people and uh, lights and there's just um, probably a lot thinner gauge in those that one. But I figured if I make that one, then I have five different motifs and then I'm sure I can find a... Uh, like one or two more motifs and then I can have like one for um every family member including Nelly so maybe next year will be one for her and then over time I can replace the ones that I made for my family previously with more Christmassy ones so that is this and I have been now, right now I'm using 3.5 millimeters and I don't remember if I've used that for the entirety of the sock or if I'm just using it for the cuff now. Um, yeah, so that's what I am working on right now. Uh, almost done. I just don't want to knit on it. He has not seen this knit, so this would be a complete surprise if I managed to finish it without him seeing it which should be possible because he likes to play video games and until the baby arrives he can play all he wants and I can knit all I want in secret now tea cheers I have another mountain of whips right here this uh, the the toes and heels for my father's socks, I used the Vilsev yarn from Hillesvog, and that is a thinner yarn, and I had a whole ball of it, so I saw that it was going to be a lot more sock fabric if I used up the entirety of it, so I found um, a silk mohair ball in my scrappy basket that looked to be very big so I think it was Arle from 
is it uh, Dalagan in Norway? And that is a very, has a lot of meterage. It's very generous. It's a very big one. I think I made a sweater with just three balls of that silk mohair. Held double. And I cast on a cuff and then I knit until uh, until I had almost run out of yarn. And that resulted in not only, so normally that would give me like a sock tube like this, and then I cut it, oops, sorry, I cut it halfway to make two socks. Right now I just have them on like barber cords um, to keep the live stitches. But it was a lot of yarn in that one, so I actually got two pairs of socks out of that one ball of the Vilsel and one ball of the Alla. So that is a lot of sock. Um, so my youngest brother is slim, like he has slim legs, not like me and my mom, we have thicker legs, which is natural. <laughs> Uh, so I figured that the cuffs of this that I didn't make very long might not be enough to like cinch in and fit nice on his legs. So I am keeping these two tubes to decide later who the recipient will be. They will need toes and I will need to cut in to put heels on them. So this will go into the resting place until I figure out whoever I should knit socks for. And then for the then middle section of that gigantic long tube, I have these two. I think the tube is approximately around 20 centimeters. That is enough for both the women's size and men's size legs. It all depends how long you want the leg to be, really. So I needed to knit toes, so I knit toes on both of them. And I used a three millimeter needle, which is... Um, smaller than I think I used 3.5 for this and I also used some scrap yarn that I had um, one Arvetta that was by Kilkalana that was just slightly knit into and then this is the silk mohair that was used in both the Amy slipover and the other pair of socks so I had a little bit left I knit wedge toes saw that they were kind of small looking, even having knit like three rows before starting the decreases. So I might uh, hold the Arvetta double with the silk mohair for the heels, but that will create a thicker fabric. Um, I don't think I should go up in needle size without increasing the thickness of the yarn, because you do want the heel to be sturdy so it doesn't wear holes. I knit the cuffs, and for the cuffs I made them quite a bit longer in two by two ribs so it does cinch more in and I tried to bind off loosely hopefully I bound off loosely enough that he can get it over his heels I hope if not I could always unravel them and redo the cuffs with more stitches maybe or a different stretchy bind off I do a regular bind off I try to do it loosely and then I do a few yarn overs just to have a little bit more material. I could get them on just fine, um, but for my legs, I kind of felt like when I pull it all the way up on my legs, it's a bit, I can feel that it's there. Um, so, but he has skinnier legs than me, so I think it's going to be perfect for him as long as he can get it over his heel. So then I am just going to hold it next to my other pair of socks. I really should keep one pair of socks with like the, the correct length so I have reference. Um, but I'm just going to hold it up next to this one and see where the heel starts. And then I'm going to pick up the stitches here, skip a row and pick up the stitches here, cut and unravel halfway and then knit around and around and do wedge toe-like decreases to have three pairs of socks finished for my brothers and father 
and I do think this is enough for the for the heels so it should be fine um yes more more whips I think I'm just gonna do the crinkle bag and empty it so okay so I was very kindly sent a yarn kit for um, Biche et Bouche. They're one of their advent packages this year. So they had several patterns where you could sort of order an advent kit. And I am making their number 59 scarf. And hopefully the colors are not blowing out too much. It's looking a little bit more yellow on camera, um, but this is their design that uses six balls of yarn in their Le Grosse Silk and Mohair. Let's see if we can focus. Come on, it's blowing out a little bit. It's their Le Grosse Silk and Mohair, and it uses two balls in each colorway. The dark cocky, the dark red, and the dark gold. And I think they also sold kits where with more of like a blue version. This is a warm toned and right up my alley. And this is in one way very autumnal colors, which I like. But they're also giving me Christmas vibes because red, gold, and green are my kind of Christmas colors, although here they are a bit warmer tone than like my classical go-to Christmas versions of red, gold, and green, but I think it's looking really nice. And I have almost used up my first bold of ball of the gold. Um, if you look closely, there are kind of there there are three different kind of motifs that repeat. And those are the three that you see here. Uh, so this one uses three colors, this one uses two colors, and this one uses one color. And I'm currently working on the red version of this panel right here. And what I find really great about this pattern is that it looks like color work. And um, I don't like working color, color work flat because of the backside, but it's not color work it's um you play with different structures but you're always just carrying one strand of yarn and i think the way that they have done the edge is also looking very neat like a slip stitch edge i highly enjoy that the back side of the scarf also looks very nice so this is the wrong side of this motif the this section doesn't really have a right and wrong side. It looks the same. And the same goes for for this section. It's the same on both sides. So it really is just this panel that has like a front side and back side. And you can definitely see the front side is very nice. But it's not like the back side is not nice either. And it's such a joy to knit on. I actually had to put this down to focus on finishing my other gifts because... I knit on this for two days and I was not getting tired of it. It was feeding my knitting mojo. And I've done one, two, three, four, five. I'm on my sixth section. And I think the pattern has 13 sections, 13 or 14 section, sections. So I'm almost half way with the number of sections. But we're not halfway through the December, so I'm good. And it's just a really fun knit. And now that it's just one color at a time, it's also very portable. So thank you, Biche Bouche, for sending me this. It's beautiful. And I will put links and information and everything below in the description box if you are interested. And yeah. I have a big whip, which you have seen before. This is the Miles Shirt Jacket by Ozetta. 
and I will put in a photo here because it is humongous and I am close to the camera but since last time I have done a sleeve and it really doesn't take me long to finish it now I just need to do one more sleeve and put on buttons but I've just been focusing on getting all of my gifts done so um, but I do want to have this ready for when the baby comes and that could happen or in Christmas time if I am a bit early but hopefully not until January uh, but yeah I want to finish the other sleeve and this looks huge on um very big not flattering at all I knit the size large and I think my gauge is off so it's even bigger I also made it a lot longer because I wanted it to be very long uh, because I just want snuggly I just want to wrap up in this and it's the dream it is so soft <laughs> I think I think I have to say that the Hillesvog Unspun is my favorite the Nutsidin is also very soft but it differs between the bases the Hitler's Vogue is always soft and it comes double stranded and it's affordable and I do think they ship internationally. She said I was at the mill and I got some more yarn in the earlier this year and um, she said that after I had talked about it, uh, we're assuming it might be after I talked about it on the podcast, every second order from their store was unspun. It might have been someone else who talked about it as well, though I said, I, I don't know, but I am very happy with the yarn. And, um, but I always think I will hold it with silk mohair just to make it pill less, because I do have a sweater with it just on its own, and it pills a lot. But the vest, because this is the same yarn, with one strand of the so which means I had to unravel the cake into two balls. With silk mohair, has not pilled so it'll be interesting to see how this holds up because this is two strands of the unspun with one strand of silk mohair and it might be that the amount of unspun ratio to the silk mohair is still so much that it will pill but I don't think it will be as bad as the sweater without silk mohair and oh, it's just gonna be so good and it's it's huge so I can wrap my baby bump and then maybe another baby bump in this and also when Ellie comes, if I carry her like shawl wrap style, I can have this around us and it'll still be nice and warm. So yeah, very much looking forward to having this done. I might be making more cardigans in this combination in the future, uh, but maybe something a bit more fitted since I will probably meet my desire for humongous um, things with this one because this one doesn't have anything going in at the waist uh, no belt Albina McLaughlin she has a cardigan that I might be making I have enough yarn in my stash to make it in drops air and I think it would be so good but we'll see we'll see she also has some nice sweaters that I would like to make in this yarn combination, so uh, future future knits to be done. Nah, let's see, I can do this afterwards. I have this is a scarf for Matthias for Christmas. He went to Spain, Madrid, for a conference, because he's a doctor as well, um, and he brought home some yarn. He brought home four balls of the Merino Classic by Katya, and it's a soupage yarn, and it has a mix of acrylic content and virgin wool, and it's a beautiful color. It's very nice and soft. And I am nurturing this trait of his of getting the yarn and I am knitting a scarf for him. This is, somebody said that Pearl Soho has a free pattern with this technique. I just freestyled um, a simple 
simple pattern where there is no purling and I have one ball left to go as you can see and then it will be done um this is just a bunch of knitting and slip stitches so essentially you knit three stitches and then you slip one with yarn in back so that will be the middle stitch here and on the other side that stitch is going to look like this stitch and these four stitches um, shift place based on if you're on this side of the fabric or if you're on this side of the fabric so the middle this stitch is always the middle stitch on the other side very simple um i think on pro soho it's called the no pearl scarf or something along those lines but it's very nice and squishy um i don't know if the slip stitches are faster or slower for me because i don't really purl that slow but it creates a very nice squishy fabric and I like to wear scarves just open like this inside like um, a little bit of an oversized uh, coat but it's also going to be really nice to have around the neck just once um, if I have it around without like twisting the fabric it gives a lot of like width so it's going to be nice and warm even though if it's just one wrap around now it's not going to be as nice and warm as woolly wool but it's definitely nice if someone is more sensitive and he could machine wash it it'll be a nice gift for him and if he doesn't wear it i could wear it with my coat because i do think the color looks really nice but hopefully he will wear it if not it's a lot of knitting <laughs> because it is um I'm kind of forcing myself now at this point. It was fun until halfway and then it kind of got a little bit boring, which I think scarves often can get a little bit boring. That's why I never recommend scarves as like a first project for a new knitter. That is a very Norwegian thing at least that everyone is recommending or they used to recommend scarves as like something to start out with. I would much more recommend starting with something simple knit in the round so you don't have to do the turns and get like an it's you know sometimes it can be hard to get the edges neat if you don't know how to do it if you just know a knit stitch um then you're 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 gonna end up with a garter scarf with like bumps on the side but if somebody teaches you how to knit and the round cast on join and knit in the round then you have like a nice stock in a tube you make it wide it can be a cow so i i recommend that over a scarf and i also recommend to make something that you would actually like to wear because that is a great motivation now i would like this i think it's going to be beautiful and i think it's going to be something that can get a lot of wear so that is motivating me to get through the last ball. I've done three balls. I have one to go. And since the last time I recorded, I was down there. So I have done quite a bit of knitting since then. At least that's what the marker says. I hope I remember to move it last time. I think I did. Yeah, I think I did. So quite a bit more knitting has happened. One more to go. One more to go. And this is an so we'll put it back here. And what I have been doing when knitting on that scarf, just to... Sorry about the noise. Just to make it a little bit more easy for me to grab on the go, I've been using my twister. So that is Twister by the Twister Sisters. And that is with a Z. Um, I'll put it, and I'll put it down below. This is um, a tool patented, patented by them. They are two sisters and their father created this for their mother, I believe, many years ago. 
and they patented the design and they have created these that they sell and they very kindly gifted me one and the idea behind the twister is that you can have it on your arm like so and then this opens up and you put your ball of yarn let's see if i have a ball here that's easily accessible i have a huge ball but that works as well so you put the yarn onto this thing and this goes back in and then you knit from the outside of the cake and this spins around as you're knitting and the yarn is being used and i've been using this a lot it's great for walking and knitting however now that it's really cold outside i don't really get to do a lot of walking and knitting but i am anticipating um, it's going to be great when I am walking with Nelly. If she's one of those kids that just needs to constantly be carried, um, then I think this is going to be a nice thing. I can wrap her on me, walk around, and knit. Uh, but what I do when I don't want to work around, but I still want to have the ball not like flopping around, falling on the floor, if I don't have something to put the ball like in between me and a cushion or something that it stays put. I have, I don't have it with me here, but I have like one of those little circular clasp things so you can open and close. I know some people who sell stitch markers, they sell their stitch markers with this, oh, here's a single one, with this kind of mechanism. So it's, um, you can open and close it. So I have a metal version of this in my in my living room and at the cabin where apparently now I closed this one so well I can't get it open so I can put this on and then clasp it around something if I have a structure for it to hang on but I can't really slide it on and off because it's enclosed somehow then I can clasp it onto it using this and it's hanging there nice and free to knit with so that's a little hack that I have done myself so I can both walk in it with it and also hang it up. So yeah, if you use the code Inga, my name, you will get a discount on this. And I will put below um, for how long the, the discount is valid because I still need to, to um, check that with them since I am recording today. And I forgot to ask them because I didn't know which day I would be recording. And yeah, that's life for you. And I don't remember last time how many of these I had made. These are the Stella Quilt Cushion by Laura Penrose. And I have made two of this design and I have cast on for a third one. Uh, this was a test knit for her and I'm also doing... Um, another test knit for her soon and I cannot get enough of this I want to make with this combination of yarn I would like to make two pillows a blanket for Nelly and maybe even turn it into a cardigan somehow I think that would be so good <laughs> but um I will be patient and see because I don't have unlimited yarn because this yarn was gifted to me from um, a yarn store in Italy and the the yarn was on cones. I will also put that information below but essentially I have one cone of this and she's never going to get more in of this so I can knit this motif until I run out and then I will have run out and then I think I will I will do that and then I will decide whether it will just stay as pillows or if I will combine them into a blanket or if I have enough for a cardigan. We'll see. But I am loving this. Is it, it's boucle. This is boucle. And it's just so good. I have another whip. So I... And this is also in a beautiful bag from the Knitting Swan. In here, I have a sweater whip, which I am kind of not enjoying <laughs> so much. Um, 
because it's not for me and I don't tend to knit sweaters for other people. The exceptions are very close family. Uh, but this sweater is for an acquaintance. Uh, I used to live in a barn <laughs> when I worked in a GP's office as a doctor. And um, a lot of the sheepskins here are from that farm. And I wanted to get a lambskin for, for Nelly. And I asked if she had any that I could buy. And then she did have some. Uh, she proposed that instead of me buying it, I could knit a sweater and she could send the sheepskin. And um, initially I thought it would be, you know, that I could maybe decide on what kind of sweater so I could probably have maybe something in a DK gauge single color would be quickly done um, but no <laughs> the sweater that she ended up wanting me to knit is um, a bottom-up construction which I think is what is getting to me I don't like bottom-up constructions <laughs> but it's a bottom-up construction and it's on thin yarn, fingering weight yarn, and there's color work and yoke, but I'm looking forward to that. I'm hoping that will get me to finish it because right now it's just, <sighs> yeah, so it's bottom up. That's one thing that I don't like. Thin yarn and very long twisted rib for the body which is also something I'm not very much enjoying, but I finished it because I knew if I didn't finish this, I would never finish this sweater. <laughs> and I'm also doing two sleeves at a time because I think I am more, if it was for myself, I wouldn't mind if like the sleeves were slightly different where the, where the increases were done, but since it's for someone else, I'm trying to do good. So I'm knitting them two at a time on magic loop and that is also just more fiddly <laughs> so it's just, I just need to get through to the color work and then I think it will fly off the needles I am using some cute stitch markers little gingerbread men and they are making me happy though the yarn I've never used this yarn before it's the Doll of Norway, the Alpaca Forte, which is 80% alpaca, 20% nylon. And um, this is 50 grams is 133 meters. So weight wise, you'd think DK, but it knits up like fingering. Um, probably the alpaca is a heavier weight, but it's definitely knit up like a fingering, I feel. I'm using 3.5 millimeter needles and 3 millimeter needles for this. And the fabric is beautiful. Um, I don't think I would knit with alpaca for myself just because I've had experiences in the pack, pack in the past where even though alpaca feels really soft, I have had like sensitive reactions to it. So knitting an all over bottom up thin needled alpaca sweater with color work with a lot of, it's a lot of hours that will go into this project. I don't think I would do it for myself. I would probably use a wool yarn instead. Uh, but yes, this is what she wanted. It was a sweater kit and um, that is what I'm knitting on. I am contemplating because I don't think this will be done by Christmas. And I also, like she said, told me, there's no like time limit on when this needs to be done. But I don't know, it, it kind of stresses me out that I'm kind of owing someone something. And I just, I don't know how it's going to be with the baby, if all my knitting time will be gone, how I'll be feeling. So I just, I really want to make quite a lot of progress on this so that she will get it at some point. Because I already got the beautiful lambskin. So I'm contemplating this Christmas to make my mother make her, ask her if she could help me knit the stock and part of the body. 
she knits a lot looser than me so she would probably have to knit on three millimeter needles or thinner but she enjoys knitting stockinette in the round like I do uh, so if she were to help me with that and I could finish the sleeves then it would just be the color work left and I think color work for me is like chocolate chippy and it will also be less and less stitches since it's bottom up so that will help me finish it I think so I could get it sent to her before next Christmas so that is one of the things that has kind of been pulling my focus a little bit um, it's beautiful yarn, it's beautiful color, it's a beautiful design. It's just um, more laborsome than what I would usually make for myself. Even, I think. But yeah, it's going to be good. I just need to make myself want to knit on it. Now, we can go into the acquisitions. If acquisitions is not your cup of tea, then I will see you next time. I hope you're well and making all the things that make you happy. And if you do enjoy seeing some acquisition content, then stay tuned. An order of Newtiden arrived. I was really indecisive if I was going to treat myself to some Newtiden or not. Because, you know, I have I have yarn and not unlimited um, money flow with uh, the inflation, everything and a baby on the way. But I got sick since the last episode. Nothing serious, just a rhinovirus congestion and all that good stuff. So I decided that I deserved a little bit of a splurge. So I put in an order for these two colorways and what are the names of these? This was their last update now in, in November. They had many beautiful colors. I also really wanted to get a green one, but I have a green sweater from them and I wear it all the time. So I figured maybe I should get a color that I don't have. And that is this beautiful orange. And I think I have I have five or six plates of this. So five or six hundred grams should be enough for a sweater. I have some silk mohair in my stash. If I haven't used it all up. Because I did make a sweater in this color. So I, maybe I don't have any. Anyways, I think I have some silk mohair in my stash that could work with this. Sorry. And I just think it would make a really, really nice sweater. And I was toying with the idea of doing color work as well. So I got a few plates of the white one. This I think is undyed and it has a high lanolin content. So as they say, every, every plate or like every colorway will be different. So these weigh the same, but you can see this has a lot more volume than this one. Um, the lanolin probably adds a little bit of weight and it also makes the fiber a little bit, a bit more compact compared to the other one. I enjoy a high lanolin content. It's really nice to knit with because it's like knitting with lotion for your hands. It's really good for your hands. And um, yeah, I think if, I could combine them for color work or I could do two separate sweaters and I don't know I've been I've been really wanting a white sweater recently like a structured white sweater and this might just be perfect for that and I have white silk mohair so this this could be cast on but they also look really nice together don't they Um, I do have some white unspun from Hillsburg, but it's slightly warmer tone than this one. This is more of a crisp white. Uh, and, um, yeah, this also comes, uh, single stranded, so, uh, could make something thinner than, um, if I were to hold the Hillsburg double with silk mohair. 
So that is one acquisition. Um, another acquisition put this here, is this beautiful yarn from Canada, which my friend Sue sent me. And it is absolutely beautiful. It's yarn from the Macausland Mill. And I thought it was a year ago, but apparently two years ago, I made the Billy Pullover by Sari Norland using the McCausland Mills yarn in green. You can see I have a little bit of green left up there. She sent me enough yarn to make a cardigan with this. At least I think it's going to be enough for a cardigan. Um, I did a swatch and I realized that this colorway is probably a three ply while the green one that I had was a two ply so it is quite a quite a thicker yarn and it's a very nice it's blowing out but it's a very nice brown like heathered brown the same way the green was a very nice heathered green so the gauge is thicker so that means I have less meterage per skein but it's also um it means it's thicker, I can use bigger needles, and it will knit up faster. So that is really just a bonus. Now I just need to find the perfect pattern. I was going to make the Billy cardigan. Like that is the look that I want from this cardigan, but with pockets. Um, the Macaus and Mail yarn really has like a nice density and it will hold its shape. Like the sweater can almost stand up on its own and i really want a cardigan like that i have enough floppy cardigans i want something with like nice structure to it more like a jacket um so hmm. i was watching aka nora knits and she just did a video on uh shackets like shirt jackets and they definitely have like that density and shape of a jacket that could be nice but I do want cables and the Billy cardigan is made for I think Cascade and when I did the Billy pullover which used the same yarn I think my gauge was slightly off because even the two ply was slightly thicker than the Cascade when it knit up but it worked really fine for that design but I don't know if I could fit this one into that cardigan because it's so much thicker even if I were to go down in size um, it's a lot of knitting with all that cabling so it would be a shame if I couldn't modify it to fit so I'm gonna have a little bit more of a think about it um, and see if I find some other um, cabled cardigan patterns that kind of fill that need um, that I think this would look great in um, I think Sue, she went, she went online and saw, because these come with no ball band. And I am, I have swatched on 3.75 millimeter needles. And that was, it's too small of a needle for, for that yarn. Um, but I just wanted to see if I could squeeze the gauge down to what I needed for the billy, but I can't. So... This is how the yarn comes, and there is no label or information. But I think Sue said that it's around 113 meters, 200 grams. I will have to check that. Um, but yeah, so it's um, Aran weight, I think. I think this is Aran weight. And um, it's just going to be so good. She also sent me some lovely tea that I've already had and she sent me a pair of shoes for Nelly, which is already put in like a cute place in her wardrobe ready for her when she comes. Probably a few months after she comes, hopefully not that big deed already. And then I have another beautiful parcel that was sent to me from another friend. This is from Anina from Aniuti Knits in, in Finland. And she made me a beautiful pair of socks. And I think she also made some socks for some of our other podcaster friends. We are in like a little chat group together. And 
I was just so touched that she made me these stunning socks. They are right up my alley, both color-wise, but also texture-wise. So I see she, she does, she has knit with a strand of fingering held with a strand of silk mohair and those are the best socks to wear. I love them and that's why I knit a lot of socks like that. It's just gives that extra bit of luxury to your knitted socks. And they are just stunning. So now that I've shown it to you, I can actually start wearing them. So I'm going to put them on afterwards. They're going to be so nice with this plaid dress that I'm wearing. Thank you, Anina. She also created something for Nelly, and it has the ball band on, so I can show you. This is made in some beautiful Finnish yarn. This is the Karama Lanka Studio. I'm not saying that right. And this is the MCN Sport. It's 80% superwash merino and 10% cashmere. And 10% nylon, so that's why it's so soft. And this is the terracotta colorway. And look how cute this is. This is just so precious. It's so beautiful. Just admire it for a second there. <sighs> She's gonna be so cute. I think if I could like choose my favorite color like kind of thing that I would like for Nelly. I'm, I'm not a huge pink person and I'm a big fan of gender neutral colors so things can be used again and again and this is just the perfect color. This is this would be beautiful for any baby and mother. <sighs> so this is going to be beautiful. It's so nice. I can't um, thank her enough for this. And it's a cardigan too, which is very convenient. And yeah, once I have finished like some gift knits and all the other stuff, I might knit up something to go with this, like a romper, maybe some pants, maybe a hat. I have some yarn from Karana in my stash from a yarn swap that I did with Anina. Uh, and yeah it would be good so pretty so this is going down with to my where i have all the knits hanging up for nelly or folded for nelly hopefully i can get around to do like a little video before she's here where i can show you all all the the knits that i have for her i haven't knit that much myself but i do have some gifted knits and something that my mom held on to from when I was little that my grandmother made, which is a very special place in my heart and um, I could show you. So this will go down there. And last of the acquisitions is um, a little bit of yarn. I can show you this first so I went to Bergen and somebody I think somebody out here on YouTube I don't think it was Instagram messaged me and said I should go to Pinsvin Design and I had never heard of Pinsvin Design but apparently uh, it's a store run by a woman who lives a little bit out of town and I plugged it into my GPS I took the bus out it was pitch dark because it's winter and I was walking like on the side of a road, kind of feeling like I was a little bit, this was a little bit shady. I was on my own. <laughs> I had no idea where I was. Um, and I crossed like a little bridge and I came to this house in the dark and there were no signs. Um, and then in the basement of this house, there was a little post-it that says, knock. <laughs> I was like, is this like, a scary movie or is this um the yarn store <laughs> but i could see like behind the bushes in the windows that they were there were yarn in there so i knocked and went inside 
and I was so pleasantly surprised. Often when I go to Norwegian yarn stores they all carry the same so they'll have like two kinds of yarn so typically they will have like Sanesgarn and drops or maybe they'll have um, Rauma and Sanesgarn, some might have Hillesvog, um, some might have Dalegarn, but I rarely find a store where they have something new, like something more international, something that's harder to kind of get your hands on, and that was this store. They had Isayer, um, which I've been able to find other places, um, but they had so much yarn that I had never heard of. So I was like in a candy store <laughs> with a with a budget. <laughs> um, but I spent a lot of time just squeezing the yarn and talking to the lady who who owned it. And I ended up going for because she had like full skeins and she had like, like remnants of skeins. Um, I think a lot of the yarn that she had she gets from abroad in cones and then winds it up and sells them and she had like mink fiber a uh, fox fiber beaver fiber cashmere and a lot of like mixed fibers and like the natural fibers so not synthetic not super wash no nylon and she had this base which was called the killing in it's 100 percent cashmere and this is the brown tweed colorway and 50 grams is 375 meters and 210 kroners and so it's it's um it's thin it's thinner than fingering but i think she said it would knit up as a fingering because it blooms quite a lot with washing so we'll see i got this much and then I got this to pair with it and I have two of these. These are not the full 50 gram ones um, because I they, they are more expensive. I think it's um, this is 44 grams and costs around 242 kroners. Um, but I just needed enough meterage to match with this meterage, so that's why I bought two that were not completely 50 grams because I don't need to have like a little bit of yarn left over. I just need it to match. And my thought is to make an Amy slipover in this. Now it's going to be thinner than the Amy slipover in the unspun because it's a lot thinner yarn. But hopefully it's going to bloom beautifully and the silk cashmere this is not mohair this is 75 percent cashmere and 25 percent silk 600 meters to 50 grams hopefully it's going to bloom out nicely and fill in so it's going to make a beautiful drapey warm soft fabric and i am going to do the neckline last so that i can use up every bit of yarn for this. She also had another cashmere base that I fell in love with, the color. So I got two skeins of this. And it's, um, I would call it marled. It's marled warm and cool brown together. And this is their, um, th it's another killing in yarn. 100% cashmere. This is the uh, Heather Brown Meleft Brun. And it's a 215 meters to 50 grams. And I have 100 grams here. So um, about a fingering weight. And what I was thinking with this is to uh, make a hat and fingerless mittens. So I'll have a cashmere hat with fingerless mittens for moi. That is, that is what I am envisioning for this. And um, yeah, I think it's going to be perfect. I also got a single skein of some English yarn. This is, uh, sh no, it's not English, it's American. Shepherd's Wool from the Stonehenge Fiber Mill in Michigan, US. So she had this 
and she said that she was no longer able to get her hands on this and um this is 100 percent merino worsted spun fine wool in the color mulberry and 250 yards per four oz I think it's a DK and the thought behind getting this so I'm not a very purple fan but this is so dark that it's almost looking charcoal-y and I'm going to have this as like a special yarn to put into a blanket that I'll be testing for for Laura Penrose I believe because the purple that I had in that one is not the right thickness so if i can't make it work then this would work with uh, the yarn thickness and i think it's it, it's nice to have this next to all like the brown and greeny ones to kind of tie it all together so that is the idea behind this and if not it would be a beautiful accessory skein because it is really nice and soft last earlier this summer i got i bought like an advent box from wild in the woods so if you haven't opened that if you ordered it then this is my last acquisition so bye but uh yeah i opened it i opened the yarn and it's not like a typical advent box where you have something to open each day. It's a box and you open it and there's like little packages. There's two skeins wrapped up and nothing is like numbered or there's no there's no information as to when you should open what. So it kind of is just like a gift for yourself and you can open up, I think, what you want to. So I opened up the yarn and I have knit with Wild in the Woods before. I knit a sweater. It's very rustic. Um, even I find it a little bit itchy. Uh, but <laughs> these two are 100% rustic Canadian wool. It's a one ply fingering weight, 400 yards to 100 grams. So fingering weight. And I don't think I will be making myself a hat or anything on my neck just because I do find the sweater a little bit scratchy and I, this is similar. It feels slightly softer though, um, but I think it would be really good for mittens and socks. And since it's uh, no nylon content and it's a single ply, I would not hold it on its own for socks because that would be asking for holes even though I don't usually get holes in my socks. So I would hold these together with some silk mohair in socks and I think it would be, be so warm and so nice. So that is what I am thinking for the future with this. And I think that was everything that I had for today. Hey, now I am going to have some more tea. I got myself one of these uh, pots so that when I sit upstairs after Nelly arrives, I can have tea with me and have warm tea for a few hours at least without having to go downstairs to the kitchen. And um, I'm gonna make myself some more food hang out with Matthias. We're going to a Christmas market tomorrow. I am very excited. He is coming. <laughs> and then we're going to um, a friend's house tomorrow for eating sheep heads. Mm. It's a traditional thing, at least on the west coast of Norway. Boiled or steamed sheep heads. Um, the brain has been removed, but the teeth, eyes, tongue, is all there and there's usually two ways of doing it with skin on or without skin on um, in our family the tr traditional way is to do it without the skin uh, but the friends that we're going to tomorrow they do it the other way and it's going to be the first time that I eat it that way and uh, I'm looking forward to it and then on Monday making Christmas cookies with my cousin and friends and uh, 
it's just a cozy time and I will put some footage now at the end that I have taken since my last recording. Um, I wish I was a vlogmas kind of person, but I am I'm not. So instead, I'll put vid videos that I have at the end of podcasts with some music. And um, I'll see if I can't record something of the market tomorrow and the sheep heads and maybe the baking for hopefully the next episode before Christmas. Uh, if I can just find daylight being at home, because I'm still working <laughs> full time, just not the night shifts. And um, if I can find that and not be sick, then it won't be too long until the next episode. Until then, you can find me on Instagram. And uh, I hope you have a lovely December, whether you celebrate or not. If you're in the warm or cold hemisphere right now, I hope whatever you're making is making you happy. And uh, I will see you soon. Bye.
Please, for days and days, I can't take it.